So this is a tensegrity structure. It was my great good fortune to work and study with Buckminster Fuller uh, early in my life before I became a body worker. And he was the fellow who developed the geometry. Kenneth Snelson, the artist, first started making these kinds of structures. What I'd like you to notice about these is that the uh, dowels, the bones of this structure, if you will, are floating in space and they are held in space by the balance of the elastics, the muscles and the fascia, the myofascia, if we were doing an analogy to the body. So these structures, we're not used to looking at structures like this. This is similar to a balloon maybe, um, but otherwise we're used to structures that are continuous compression like houses. So we structured our body as if it were a continuous compression structure too. We think the head sits on the neck and the head and the neck sit on the torso and that it's like a stack of bricks all the way down to the ground. But in fact, the bones, well, at least we could consider it this way, the bones float inside the soft tissue. And when you start uh, seeing the body this way, you see a lot of things. You see how the problem in the hip can really be founded in the arch, that the problem in this side of the neck is down at the bottom of the rib cage on the other side, because you start seeing how the interrelationships of things start working in the body. So Eiderolf used to say, where you think it is, it ain't. And this tensegrity gives you a model where you can see, oh, if this pulls over here because the whole structure gives into it, the pain might be over here somewhere. And uh, we're looking for ways of modeling this that would be predictive so that we could say, okay, if you have this kind of problem, then we should look um, in specific places to help sort that. But this kind of model for the body really has uh, a whole new way of thinking about ourselves that is not the usual muscles on the bones um, kind of model.